muted. Um, this is Stephanie. Thanks for chiming in. Uh, you guys are all on listen-only mode, which means you cannot talk um, at this point. So I am assuming that all of you can see my screen that has the title slide and that you guys can hear okay. Uh, if for whatever reason you do not see the screen or you cannot hear me, then please like type in the chat box that's on your dashboard and let me know. Otherwise, we will begin in just a minute. I'll give people you know, 30 seconds or so more to join in. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and start. Um, again, if you guys are just jumping on, everyone on the phone is in listen-only mode and um, are unable to communicate uh, through the phone right now. Um, if you do need to send me a message or something, you can do that through the chat function on your screen. Um, but yeah, thank you so, so much for getting on this phone call. This is our annual informational webinar for interested participants in the Water Leaders Program. Um, my name is Stephanie Scott. Um, I have only been with the Colorado Foundation for Water Education for almost two months now, so I am new. Um, but I will be taking over all the leadership and education programs here. For those of you that may have um, worked or interested in the Water Leaders Program before or have worked with the foundation, you may know Kristen Maharg, who is the past program manager. Um, I have invited her onto this call, and she may be piping in from time to time. Uh, the goal of this call and webinar is for all of you to walk away with a clear understanding of what the program is and expectations for you guys to be able to decide if you would like to apply. And since so much of the institutional knowledge of the program is in her head, I didn't want to miss out on the opportunity to, uh, you know, have her chime in uh, to make sure we don't miss anything. So if you hear from Kristen throughout the uh, web webinar, that's what that is all about. Uh, but yeah, so thank you again. And I'm just going to go over a real quick overview of who is the Colorado Foundation for Water Education. Uh, for those of you that have not worked with us in the past, um, our goal is to promote a better understanding of Colorado's water resources and their issues by providing you know, balanced and accurate information. Um, and we do that in two ways. Um, we have two main program areas. Uh, the leadership and education programs are the ones that I will be running. And they are listed here on the screen. Water leaders we are going to be talking about in depth today. Water fluency is essentially a water boot camp for uh, people that are having to make water decisions but aren't necessarily um, comfortable with making those decisions or feel they're educated enough to make those decisions. So this is a multi-month boot camp for uh, people to walk away with that comfort level of making decisions. So people like this would be, you know, city managers or you know, people that have worked in the utility sector but are now working their way up to leadership and having to make decisions and things like that. Um, that'll be happening in, from May to June this year on the West Slope. And then uh, tours is another program I run. Uh, we do everything from short urban bike tours to uh, big multi-day basin-wide tours. This year, our basin tour is going to be in southwest Colorado in June. So if you're interested in that, you visit our website. And the fourth program that I run is the Water Educator Network. And this is a network of educators across the state that are educating people from all over on water. So anywhere from you know, teachers teaching K through 12 education to you know, water festival organizers to utilities that have an education outreach branch. And the network is designed to be a resource 
for each other to share best practices, content tools, all that fun stuff. So those are the four programs that I manage. Uh, the other suite of programs that we have here at the foundation are, is our content programs. And the two main things there are Citizens Guides and Headwaters Magazine. Um, I'm sure most of you have seen these. Our guides are um, handbooks on you know, Colorado water laws. Um, understanding transbasin diversions, you know, where your water comes from, things like that where, you know, one person could pick up a copy of this and feel like they're educated enough on that subject matter. And then Headwaters Magazine, we produce three times a year. This is a picture of our most recent one that was just dropped off to our office yesterday, so it's hot off the press. And that issue is all about public health. So today, this is what you guys are all here for. Um, we're going to go over a little bit of what is Water Leaders, what to expect from the program. We have three alumni from our last year's graduating class, uh, and they're going to give their brief testimony on what water, le water leaders meant to them. I'll review the application process really quickly so you guys know what you need to do to get all your materials in. And then the, the reason why we're all here is for all of you to have an opportunity to ask questions and make sure that you know you um, have a good understanding of what Water Leaders is so you can decide if you would still like to apply. Um, because you are all on mute, you will not have an opportunity to um, talk and um, voice your questions over the phone. So you guys will need to be putting in your questions, typing them in under the chat function on your dashboard. And I will be uh, filtering through those questions throughout the webinar. So you do not have to wait until the end to type in your questions. If a question comes up, please type it in. I'm going to be moderating all of those. And you can ask questions directly to myself or any of the other panelists that are on the phone, or you can ask general you know, overview questions, and we will you know, decide who answers that for you. So um, if you have um, any technical problems with that, um, hopefully it's pretty straightforward. You just type in the box and you know, push send. So here we go. So what is a water leader? So um, in my short two months with the foundation, I get this question a lot. It's sort of like, I, I've heard about that program. It's awesome. But I don't really know if I consider myself a water leader. Um, and you know, I think it's a question we're going to address down the road. But we want to start out with what is the goal of water leaders? So the goal of the program is to develop this pipeline of water leaders um, in the state. Uh, it began in 2006, and this year will be our 10th class, so we're very excited about that. Um, and since the beginning, there has been a strong commitment to evaluate and adapt the content and the activities that happen throughout the class to keep up um, and better address current issues that are facing the water, the water world and water management, water resources in Colorado. Um, and with that said, while the conversation really is about water and water issues, and we learn about how to address those issues in the program, the true focus and the true purpose of water leaders is personal leadership development. And um, we will talk about how we address the personal development um, and what we do uh, to hit on those points. Uh, but if you walk away with anything today, knowing that by participating as a water leader, it is really a personal commitment to yourself um, to explore you know, your potential, your skills, and sort of you know, your place in the water world and you know, where you could grow in the future. Uh, so Water Leaders is a partnership between Morph Consulting and the Colorado Foundation for Water Education. And after the last you know, 10 classes of programming, we really are known as the premier professional development course for the water community in Colorado. And this is Ms. Cheryl Benedict. Um, she is now in her fifth year of helping to facilitate the Water Leaders program. She's with Morph Consulting. And I will let her give a brief um, intro to herself and what her role is in uh, the program. But first, I just want to say, um, I mean, you can see on the screen that she has a lot of experience and skills and is amazing at what she does. But what the screen doesn't say is really how much she pours her heart into this program. You know, Cheryl becomes, you know, not only a personal coach to all of us and all the water leaders during the class and after the class. Um, one of the most common things I hear 
still when talking to water leaders is, you know, oh my goodness, I had, you know, I was stressing out at work, I had this really big decision to make, and all I could do, I had to call Cheryl. Or, you know, I had this going on at home, my personal life, and I just had to call Cheryl. So I just wanted to acknowledge that Cheryl is so much more than what she is on paper, and we cannot do this program without her, um, and that she has become a lifeline for all of us water leaders throughout the state. So, Cheryl, are you there? I am. Wow, Stephanie. <laughs> Thank you. That means so much. So um, when Stephanie and I were talking about the, this part of the webinar, she wanted to know how I first learned about water leaders and how I got involved. And that that goes to Greg Tenike, who is the president of Leonard Rice Engineers, who was the president of the Colorado Foundation of Water Education. And he said that there was an opportunity to, to apply for being the leadership development coach and consultant and and I applied and I was thrilled because I, I at the time I, I had just lived on the Dolores River in Dolores, Colorado and, and was then living on the McPhee Reservoir and as a citizen was patently aware of how important water is to the West Slope and how important water is to Colorado and and it just made me on a personal level thrilled to be able to get involved so one of the things I have to say about the water leader program is it is so unique I have never found another association that is focused on providing a leadership an intense leadership course for its members and they pride themselves on socially engineering the classes so that there's a diverse population both geographically both with regard to profession it's it's an amazing experience so next slide so here are expectations that we've come up with to share with you so as Stephanie said earlier, leadership development is really a personal endeavor. It's it's all about you. It's it's the more you put into it, the more you're going to get out of it. And to that point, it actually works best if others in your world actually know what you're working on so that they can be aware of the changes that you're making and celebrate your success. One of the things that we'll talk about later is the whole plus delta process and also how how you're going to be working with me as a coach. Next slide, please. So how do leaders develop? This is a model that, that we use a lot. So obviously one way that we develop is through education and training. I think all of us have, have learned a lot over our careers through this. However, I need to just say that that one of my personal events with regard to education and training is I, uh, I intentionally customize each of the sessions so that so that it's really focused on what is actual, what is concrete, what is factual, what is practical, what are tools that you can immediately apply back at work. I personally loathe leadership programs that are off the shelf, that are deadly dull, horribly academic, boring. That's not this. This our program is very interactive. It's very much getting into it right away. It's, it's hardly any lecture at all. It's mostly you having an opportunity to work on yourself as a leader and, and making sure that everything we do, you can apply it. Because to me, that's the benchmark or hallmark of a really good leadership program. And then how leaders develop is also through experience. And one of the things that we'll talk about over our six months together is how can you apply this into your work so that it becomes more real and more authentic to what you're doing and then finally leaders develop through coaching and so we'll have six whole months together in a very intimate confidential one-on-one -on -one coaching relationship where you share the things that you're up against and we strategize ways to solve problems ways to deal with difficult people ways to grow your career and then the mentoring part you get fulfilled with that in two different ways which we'll talk about later. Next slide. So I will take it over from here. Um, this is a snapshot of what to expect if you are accepted into the 2017 class. 
Uh, you'll see there are four sessions. The four sessions are two-day sessions, so one night over, um, staying over. And you'll see the dates. Um, one of the questions we always get is, are they mandatory? And yes, they are. So because of the structure of the program, the intimacy, the, you know, the conversations that are had, you know, it really does make an impact if you miss a session. And so attendance at all sessions is mandatory. Um, and you'll see there listed just the themes to give you an idea of what we talk about. So we start off the, the six months with, you know, looking at yourself with assessments and who you are as a leader. And we translate that into, you know, how to use those skills to navigate change and communicate and problem solve and, you know, all these things that we deal with on a daily basis in our jobs. And then session four, we wrap it up with, you know, okay, this is, everything we've learned together, but how are we going to take this forward in the future? And what does that look like with building our water community of practice professionally and growing personal goals and, uh, you know, like how, you know, we don't want to just leave and walk away, but what does this look like as a water leader going forward? So um, that is what to expect. Those are the dates and just the general area. We are still working on program details, and so, um, the exact location is not narrowed down yet, but those are the general areas that we will be hosting the um, session. And then I'll give it back here to Cheryl to explain sort of this is a snapshot of all the different pieces that we have constructed and molded together to build our Water Leaders program. Thanks, Stephanie. So looking at the yellow bars, the what to expect, the Myers-Briggs type indicator, the strength finder, the leadership practices inventory and the 360, which is a 360, and then the Harrison assessment, all four of these assessments will happen at the beginning of the program. And so it's very front end loaded with assessments. And you might be wondering, wow, that's a lot. Why? Well, it's because we focus so much on emotional intelligence. I don't know if you've heard that concept before, but your IQ is your smarts, your intelligence, obviously that's, that's what gets you hired. But your emotional intelligence, your EQ, is what will get you promoted or in some cases fired. And so emotional intelligence, the first two quadrants that emotional intelligence focuses on is self-awareness. How aware are you of your triggers? Do you, do you know when you're triggered? Do you, do you know how you can thrive in situations that are challenging or stressful? Do you know how your weaknesses impact others and maybe even drive them nuts? And so you'll be getting feedback from others on the leadership practices inventory on yourself as a leader. It's called a 360 tool because you'll get to invite whoever you'd like to to give you feedback on yourself as a leader with the assumption that leadership is everybody's business, especially in our world of water. And so it's heavily front-end loaded because it's all about increasing your self-awareness and understanding how you have an impact on others. So that's the yellow bars. Moving down the cohort group and the shadowing assignment, those are two opportunities for mentoring and leaders learn very much so in this way. So cohort groups are going to be groups that Stephanie and I create. We'll each run two of them. And this is an opportunity for you to have a small, intimate, trusted advisor group with three other water leaders in the class. You'll be answering the questions, what are you up against personally and professionally? It's an opportunity every month for an hour, sometimes an hour and 15 minutes to really get real. Like, here's what I'm up against. This is really hard. Um, I bumped into a, a issue with my boss. I don't know how to navigate it. Or here's what's going on at home. I've got an issue with my son. I would love your, your support or your wisdom on how to deal with this. So the cohort groups become very tight and many times continue way on the, beyond the water leader program. The shadowing assignment is an opportunity for you to select two mentors in the water profession who you'd like to meet with to learn more about what they do, to learn more about how, how you can enrich your career by understanding more what it is they do. And that's a, an incredible opportunity that the foundation provides for you. Um, then the plus delta, the, the, the 
the green cross and the and the red triangle, what that means is that after every session we do a plus delta to get your feedback on how can we do better because so much of this is customized. First of all, it's being customized now for you as Stephanie and I meet, but it will continue to be customized from class to class based upon the very honest and real feedback you give about how we can do better. Then in the light blue box, the coaching with Cheryl, that's an opportunity to meet with me once a month. Um, in a usually over the telephone, it's an opportunity to talk about what are the behavioral changes that you're working on or what are the things that you're doing to grow yourself as a leader. And it's also an opportunity to, to talk about, okay, so what's next? You're here in this role now, which is, I'm sure, awesome, but what are opportunities for career development for you? And so a lot of our calls, if you're interested in that, can be focused on career development. And then one of the things that Kristen and I instituted two years ago are unplugged sessions. What that means is we invite a, a leader from our community in and basically we close the doors and we assume confidentiality and you have an opportunity to hear what they have been up against as a leader in their career. Sort of what's the, the story you may never hear on the street? What have been the challenges? What have been the conflicts they've had to navigate? And it's an opportunity to ask questions and to really get a feel for, for them as a, not only as a leader, but also as an individual. We'll have lots of site visits, opportunities to meet with subject matter experts, and then it's a, an amazing opportunity for networking, which I'm sure Kevin and Kelly and Bill will attest to later. Next slide. All right. Thank you for that awesome overview, Cheryl. Um, it sure. is a pretty comprehensive program, and it's hard to, <laughs> to digest all of it and, and talk about it in just a short couple minutes. But. Um, so we wanted to talk a little bit about who is a water leader because, I mean, you are thinking about applying for this program and I'm sure there's all these things running through your head on, you know, am I appropriate, am I not, you know, what is it going to do for me? Um, and so, um, you know, thinking through, I remember when I first applied, I am a graduate of the water leader program in 2015. Um, I had to apply twice to get into the program, which is not uncommon. Um, and at the time, I still didn't even really think, like, am I really a water leader? Um, but it's funny how things work, and here, two years after that, I am now running the water leaders program. So um, I would say put, um, you know, let's think about if you're a water leader by answering some of the questions that are on the screen. So um, water leaders are, you know, are you a professional that, you know, has an impact on local or statewide water management? I mean, and that could be a whole bunch of different things. Um, are you someone who holds either workplace or civic leadership position? Um, I get the question a lot on what does leadership really mean. Leadership can be, you know, physically, you know, managing staff, managing a team, you know, managing a department, but it can also be managing a program or a project, you know. So if you're currently leading um, in your current capacity that has an impact on water, then you are definitely a candidate. Um, like we mentioned, there you know is a lot of self-assessment, and you have to be ready to take a deep dive at understanding your own skill sets, um, be vulnerable to the process, and be willing to be open and honest, uh, so that at the end you can identify your skill sets and ultimately you know what is your role in the water community in Colorado. Um, you have to be open to working with Cheryl, because um, as she mentioned, that can get pretty intimate, um, and. Water leaders represent all different sectors, so everything from recreation to ag to utilities to government. Um, and Cheryl mentioned a little bit, and we'll talk about it further on sort of the class is, you know, socially structured so that there, you know, we do have representation from all different sectors, and so all sectors are welcome to apply. Uh, so far, since 2006, we have had 127 water leader graduates. And like I mentioned, you would be a part of the 10th graduating class, so pretty awesome. <clears throat> the results are in, so here are just a snapshot of some of the stats that we have on the program. When I first started a couple months ago, the first thing I did was go back and read all the evaluations. And um, there's quite a bit of information on personal testimonies and projects 
and sort of, you know, where people thought, you know, they were at the beginning of the course versus at the end. And here are just some statements that um, show how effective the recipe for leadership development that we have developed is. So, you know, alumni are reasonably are very satisfied with the program effectiveness and would recommend it to other participants. Um, they're uh, satisfied with the opportunity to network and meet other water professionals. And um, this other one about cost, I'm sure you all have seen the cost of the program, you know, but 97% of alumni would tell potential participants or, you know, other employers who are thinking about sponsoring a participant that it is definitely worth the cost. So uh, those are sort of the program in numbers, uh, but numbers can't really tell the true story. So we have invited some water leader alumni uh, to join in on the call to give their personal testimony on you know, what the water leaders program was to them. Uh, we brought together these three uh, alumni and we presented them with a question on how are program graduates utilizing the skills and tools acquired during the water leaders program, both in their lives and in the workplace. So now we are going to hear from three of the alumni, and then I'm going to wrap up the testimonies and switch my hats from project manager to um, a water leader graduate to wrap up the conversation on, you know, how has it impacted our lives. So the first alumni that we have is Bill McCormick. He is currently with the Colorado Division of Water Resources, and he is the chief of the Colorado Dam Safety. Branch. So, Bill, are you on the line? I am. Thanks, Stephanie, and uh, yeah. welcome, everyone. Um, and I'm going to answer that question in, in, with a, a, a little bit more information as well. I, I wanted to just um, sort of reach out to, to folks as to um, to give a little background of why I thought I needed the training, um, so it might resonate with others. And um, as Stephanie said, I'm the chief of the dam safety branch. I've got 11 direct reports all around the state. Um, prior to, to this training, I had no formal training on leadership or management. Um, I was just kind of running on instinct and felt like I was winging it. And I felt I, I needed, it was time that I needed to get some better tools to be able to manage my group better and keep them motivated doing the good things we do. Um, I had a, a, a large project that I had initiated and um, I was having doubts about whether I'd bitten off more than I could chew. And I thought this would be a great timely training to be able to um, make me execute this $1.6 million project effectively. Um, and then um, also just wondering about what's, what's in my future. Um, um, you know, the, the leadership part of it, I just was wondering, I, I could lead 11 people, but there's other opportunities out there to lead even more people than that, bigger departments and, and that kind of thing. So I wanted, I needed some um, some training on whether I was really capable of that or not. So those were my goals for going into it. Um, I'm happy to say that it was pretty much instant gratification. Um, once I started the training, even reading the materials before the first workshop, we got into this, the Myers-Briggs self-assessment, which I thought was really cool. Um, just the idea of, of learning how we as individuals think and process information and work with other people and then also applying that to the people that, that we face and work with every day. Having the, the tools to understand that not everybody does it the same and how you can interact with people that, that do it differently but still be effective was just really cool to me and I was able to put that to work immediately with my program. I've got some geek engineers that are just straight on thinkers. I've got people that you tell them one thing and off they run, they're doers. And, and how do you effectively manage those people and build strong teams? And I was able to put put the like stuff from the first workshop instantly to work. Um, at home, I'm married and have a 14-year-old daughter, and um, I'm an engineer. My wife is an artist. We don't always get along. Having some more um, uh, tools and and, um, and information about um, how we we can how we each process the same bit of information was really cool to be able to put to work. And I can say that um, we've had a great year since we started the training and. Um, my 14-year-old talks to me from time to time, which is kind of cool. Um, so, so like um, like Stephanie and Cheryl said, these up against sessions were really neat. Um, you know, this group of of people that you'll be taking this class with, they're all passionate about the training and about what they do. That they're they're here because they want to be here. Um, 
and to be able to get on a more personal level with those in those confidential, intimate groups, um, that just fed on it, on itself, you know, through, by the time we got to workshop four, we were all really committed to it. And it's a classic case of you, you, the more you put into it, the more you get out of it. And so those, those sessions were super helpful. Um, the Harrison assessments, the LPI, those are the tools that really told me who I was and, and what I might be capable of. Um, Cheryl's coaching sessions um, and some of the work that we did on, on how to do effective and meaningful communication in this Socratic circle environment um, were super helpful. And I put those to instant use in two um, complex and emotionally charged human resources issues that I had to deal with. Um, Cheryl coached me through those and I was able to, to apply the effective communication tools to basically diffuse those and kind of navigate those pretty well, I thought. The, the field trip part of the training um, gives you uh, access to other people that have done really big projects and accomplished a lot and to have insight into how they did that and, and how, um, how these tools apply to that are really good. Um, finally, I just wanted to, to say that there is a level of commitment in this training, so um, you should go into it with some goals and a purpose. Um, and, and look for ways to apply it. Um, you know, some of us, I, I'm a learner by doing, so I really enjoyed putting these things to practice instantly and seeing what, I, what parts I liked about it, what I didn't. Um, not, not everything you'll learn applies, but there's um, so much good information there, it's great. Um, you know, take advantage of the, of the coaching that Cheryl has to offer. Um, stay connected to each other, like we've talked about. You'll develop a pretty good bond with these with the, the group of trainees that you are. Um, and it's awesome to be in a, in a place with people that have a similar passion um, for the work that we do for Colorado. And then finally, the, the idea of being part of a larger community of practice um, it feels really fulfilling to, be, to feel like we're part of that. So um, just let that, that's what I, one of the big things I got out of it. And I hope folks will look forward to, um, to participating for that reason, so that's all I have. Awesome. Great, thanks Bill. And Bill will um, stay on through the end of the call, so if you guys have specific questions for him, he's happy to answer. All right, our next alum from last session as well is Kelly Romero Haney, and she is currently the Water Resource Manager for the City of Steamboat Springs. Kelly, are you on? Yep, thanks Stephanie. Um, thanks for the opportunity to chat with um, the folks that are interested in doing the Water Leaders program this year. Um, it was so fulfilling and satisfying for me. Um, a little bit more on my background, again, I'm the Water Resources Manager, which was a new position um, for the City of Steamboat. And so it was good. I've been in this role about two and a half, almost three years. And so I've been able to kind of invent <laughs> the role as I go. I certainly have uh, plenty of things I'm accountable for. One is I have to manage the water rights portfolio um, and raw water supplies for the city of Steamboat, and that's half my job. And the other half is managing stormwater or MS4 program and um, really stream health for the city. Um, and of course, the city of Steamboat has the Yampa River running through it, and um, I have a, a real passion for the protection and preservation of the health of the Yampa. Um, but sometimes I, uh, I found that I had so much passion for that that I didn't necessarily have um, a focused vision for, um, for what, how should I take that, where should I go with that professionally. So when I started the Water Leaders course, I had two questions. One was, what am I good for? <laughs> what am I good at? Um, and how do I really focus my professional vision to meet um, uh, my goals? And then the second is, how do I become a leader and grow professionally in a place where I'm in a small community, um, pretty remote up here in Steamboat, I work for a smaller city, so it's not like there's a large water resources department that I can move up in. Um, and, and the other challenge, too, is, of course, as many of you probably have families as well, so you're not particularly mobile, and so I'm committed to the Steamboat area. So where do I go from, from there? 
um, the Water Leaders Program really helped me to answer those questions in several ways. Just as Bill mentioned, the self-assessments were so helpful, just to kind of calibrate and, and really orient um, myself to what, what am I good for, what am I good at. And it, in a sense, it almost kind of gave me permission to really uh, utilize the skills that I think I intuitively knew that I had, but maybe was a little bit um, health, uh, hesitant or apologetic about really applying them. You know, going through the Harrison assessments and the strengths finders, I really learned that I am meant for leadership and really meant to, um, uh, you know, I'm pretty driven, which sometimes can lead me to be overcommitted as well, but um, it really helped me to understand, okay, here's what I have to offer my organization and my community. And then the second way that water leaders really helped me to answer those original questions was through the relationships that um, I developed through the program. I mean, the relationships with all the other water leaders um, and also the leaders on the plug, um, where we get to hear from water professionals throughout the state and what they work on. And then also when we get to shadow um, water pro um, other water professionals. So I had the opportunity to shadow Taylor Hawes with the Nature Conservancy and then also um, Justice Gregory Hobbs. And meeting with them was also reaffirming that, and, and in a sense kind of gave me permission to use my leadership skills that were reaffirmed by the self-assessment um, and apply them even in my smaller community. You know, and since then, I feel that I've really kind of molded my role as water resources manager for the city, but even kind of expanded into a leadership role for the Yampa Basin. You know, I serve on the Yampa White Green Basin Roundtable as the Route County Municipal Rep, and then I stepped up to um, be the public education, public outreach representative for the roundtable. And, um, and I think I've been more empowered to, to play a leadership role in that. I serve on other um, boards and committees in my basin um, that are related to water, the Community Agricultural Alliance, and also the Upper Yampa Watershed Group Technical Committee. Um, and so I think, I think for a lot of people, they go to the water leaders course thinking, oh, what's my next move? You know, what's my next career move? How am I gonna grow in that? And I think I walked away with, from it realizing that I'm in the best position for me for where I'm at in my life, the best position for my family, and that have gobs and gobs of opportunity to be a leader and to grow within the role that I have here at the city. Um, the timing of water leaders was so great for me as well because as I am heading into a new chapter of my life personally, I have, um, uh, I'm married and I have a nine-year-old now, but I'm about to have another baby in April. So it's kind of good to sort of um, get definitely get calibrated um, before that rocks my world come spring. So um, <laughs> really, I <laughs> I think the the program really helped prepare me for what's next on the horizon. So that's all I have. Thank you. Great. Thanks so much, Kelly. That was great. All right, and our next alumni is Kevin Terry. He's with Trout Unlimited and down in the San Luis Valley as a project coordinator. Kevin, are you there? Thanks, Jeff. I'm here. Um, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to talk about uh, water leaders um, from a perspective um, that I have here with my role with Trout Unlimited where I do not manage staff um, and I do not have that kind of leadership role. Um, however, in my work, I work um, in somewhat sticky territory in the water world where I'm working on conservation and um, managing water for environmental and, and uh, uh, fish-related reasons, and I'm working with directly with the ag community. And so the leadership skills I got out of the water leaders really helped me be a better leader in terms of managing projects and programs, um, conversations really understanding the people side of the water work, um, having a better understanding of, of how history and culture influences uh, decisions and how um, I can help uh, use these skills to, to drive that. Um, so one of the things I wanted to talk to you guys about was 
just some advice, which is first and foremost, do this. This is this is something you will you will appreciate. Um, dive in, embrace the awkward. <laughs> it is unique. You're gonna you, you should expect the unexpected, but but definitely do this. Um, some other advice I'd have about the program is <laughs> through the process, involve your family and friends. Ask them if this is how you act. Um, you know, play with it. Um, really, really take it to that personal level. Um, and you know, I think for me, as an opportunity to kind of involve my family and friends in a part of my work where a lot of my work is relatively boring to them. So, my wife needs, you know, does not need any more fish in her life. But this, this was kind of a cool way for us to. Um, help my career development um, and and have fun with it. Um, I'd also suggest that you trust this process early and um, and use what you learn. So, you know, kind of play with it again. Uh, have fun with it. Take advantage of the opportunity to meet all the new and interesting people that are going to be in your class. It's, it's extremely diverse. Um, I think one of the things I took away the most from the program was, um, you know, how, uh, understanding, you know, how every sector of the water community in Colorado works together and the people involved in that. Um, take advantage of the knowledge and the skills that those people have and that they're sharing with you. Um, you know, take advantage of your time with Cheryl and the coaching calls. Those are so important. Cheryl's such a professional. Um, really, really take that seriously. Take advantage of that. Um, you know, use your shadowing experience, as Kelly said. Use your shadowing experience to really Help you use your leadership skills and to you know to get something that you're really interested in. Um, the the people on the on the list of shadow shadowers are um, amazing people in all sectors, um, and so I, I really just thought that was a really cool part of the program. Um, you know, and then then getting back to to how I'm using it um, personally, I'm using it because I know myself better. Um, I've got some tools to help understand myself and I can and I, I feel just healthier about that um, in general uh, I have some tools to work with stress um, I have a different viewpoint on how I can address challenges I think my communication with my family's improved like Bill suggested um, I've really got a different perspective on the social side of the water community uh, and the people involved and um, you know, me as my personality type, I, I didn't give enough um, respect and, and attention to that side of, of what we all do and how we are all connected. Um, and, and then again, professionally, you know, the leadership skills really enhanced, I guess, what I didn't know I had um, or helped me um, strengthen my confidence and in, in the skills I did have. And then it helped me give me some new skills and, and some new ways to work on managing programs and partnerships and um, being more successful um, with, with a variety of personality types. Um, I've, I feel like I've got a much more holistic view of the, of the people um, involved in water from water utilities to the engineering side to conservation and environment. Um, I, I've, I've got a better grasp at, at the state level of, of, of that, um, that component of to water. Um, you know, I think now professionally I'm really a lot more likely to take advantage of opportunities um, that I may have been you know, afraid of prior or um, nervous about. So I, I think that's really broadened my potential as a leader in, in the water community. Um, and you know, now I'm really taking a lot more time on, on the relationships and I'm using some of the skills I've learned to, to help deliver and receive information. Um, differently um, and from you know with strategy involved from from the people I'm working with from person to person that might change and I think that that's something that really came about through the program so you know that's what I wanted to share with you guys and and uh, and I also wanted to share with you guys knowing Steph personally um, I think that she's going to do an incredible job continuing uh, with Cheryl with this program so I encourage you all to apply for sure well, thank you, Kevin. That was very nice, um, and thank you so much. And again, um, you guys can you know keep your questions coming in if they're either directed to one of 
those three alumni or just in general, you know, type in your questions and we will start answering those here shortly. Um, Kristen, are you on the phone? Did you have anything to add as sort of a past perspective of the program? Yes, I am. Can you hear me all right? We can. Hi, everyone. Thanks so much for inviting me to participate in the webinar. Um, I ran the Water Leaders Program for eight years while I was at the Foundation for Water Education and recently started a family and moved on. And um, But I just appreciate um, the interest that you're showing in this program because it um, really is um, quite a life-changing experience. I just want to highlight a couple of the common themes that you've been hearing from Cheryl, Stephanie, and the alumni um, in order to strengthen the um, the strengthen your application. Um, so one of those common themes is to have a specific challenge in mind as you are applying for this program. Um, we see people just generally interested in leadership and better management, um, but your application will be much more successful if you um, start thinking about what exactly is it that you're struggling with in the workplace? Um, is it you're feeling stuck or you're spinning your wheels too much? You're maybe not getting along with a coworker or you feel like you don't have the support of your supervisor. Um, so really start thinking about what that challenge is because the Water Leaders Program is most effective when you go in with some specific problems that you're trying to address rather than I want to be a better leader in general, which is great too, obviously. Um, but then also think about what is your role in the larger community, or what is your vision for the future of water in Colorado, um, so that the program starts to have an impact outside of yourself, so that the Foundation for Water Education understands that um, you do have a role outside of the workplace, that you want to start moving the dialogue in a more um, inclusive or transparent way. Um, so those are a couple things that I just wanted to highlight. Um, as you consider applying, you know, talk to your supervisor, talk to your family, um, and start thinking through some of these points and messages that you will include in your application because it is an extremely competitive and selective process. We, are only able to admit 15 people per year, and we typically get 40 to 50 applicants. Um, and like Stephanie said, it's not uncommon for people to apply two and even three times before they're admitted, um, because it is a quite a big investment. Each person that is admitted into the program, um, it costs the foundation about $5,000, which is offset by your tuition, and as well as a grant from the Colorado uh, Water Conservation Board. Um, so that, those are my points that I wanted to emphasize, and um, good luck to all of you, and I'm available for questions. Great, awesome, thanks so much, Kristen. Um, you know, I put my slide on here just to sort of wrap up everything, but I think all of the alumni and Kristen hit all the points that you know I would like would have made. So I wanna definitely leave time to answer some of your questions, so I will skip past that. Uh, briefly, I'll touch on the application process, then we'll get to the questions. So, uh, applications are currently open. They are open as of December 1st. You can find all the materials on our website, which I will give you in a minute. Uh, the tuition is $3,250. That includes all the training, the assessments, the coaching, meals and lodging for the night that we stay over together. Uh, that doesn't include, you know, if you wanted to come the day before or travel or any of that stuff. Um, there are scholarships available, uh, partial scholarships, um, and on the application section, there's a section uh, for financial obligation, and in there you will add a 200-word statement or on your need if you would like to apply for a scholarship. Uh, so you can do that within the application. Um, the application materials are all due January 13th. That includes the, the physical uh, questionnaire that you fill out online. Um, on our website, there is a PDF form of that that you can preview the um, application and then the actual application is submitted uh, via a SurveyMonkey link. Um, you cannot 
um, save and continue on later the application. So that's why the PDF is on there so that you can take advantage of you know, preparing your answers and copying and pasting them into uh, the application um, when you are ready to submit it. Uh, you will need two letters of recommendation from um, someone that you choose. Those people will directly submit those letters of recommendation to myself. So um, you will be responsible for getting them all of my information and I do need all of those letters in my email outlook box by January 13th. Um, and the selection process, like Kristen mentioned, is very, very competitive. Um, we have a scoring system that has been developed and is adapted year after year, but this will sort of um, you know, help us sort through the applicants and from there it will be a variation of phone interviews and you know, further conversations to narrow it down and our selection committee will make the final um, decisions and all participants will be notified of their acceptance by February 13th and class begins March 14th. Um, so I think that sums it up with the applications and I let's go ahead and start taking some questions. So again, if you have a question, type it down in the um, chat section. Um, and the first question that I keep getting is like what is the time commitment and what does like the homework and like the pre-class surveys or work look like? Um, so maybe Cheryl, do you want to attack that question? Sure. So, and I'd, and I'd also be interested in hearing from Bill and Kelly and, and Kevin since you just went through it, but the, but the commitment before is to, to read a book, Five Dysfunctions of a Team, to complete the Myers-Briggs assessment, and to come prepared with, with what are the things that, that you personally would like to work on. Then as we move from session one to session two, there's an opportunity to complete the Harrison assessment and the leadership practices inventory, which is the 360, and that's going to be incumbent upon you to identify who do you want to get feedback from with regard to yourself as a leader. And so there will be a, a, a two-hour meeting that we'll have between the first session and second session to go over your results. There will be a one-hour cohort meeting every month. There will be a one-hour coaching session. So as we said earlier, it's somewhat front-end loaded in that a lot of the work and a lot of the preparation will happen before and then between session one and two. But that does not mean that there might not be an additional book or articles to read as we move along. But Bill, um, Kelly, Kevin, I'd love to hear from you on that one too. What was your experience with regard to the, the homework and the time commitment? And I, I might just jump in real quick. This is Kristen. Um, to kind of simplify the time commitment, I think of it as 10 to 15 hours of pre and post session work in between those in-person sessions. So um, if you've got four two-day sessions, um, you can consider travel to and from those four two-day sessions as well as 10 to 15 hours um, of practicing skills, of taking assessments, of doing homework and assignments, of coaching calls and, and cohort groups in between each session. Thanks. Yeah, I guess I would just, this is Bill, and, and I would echo that. That's kind of what I was thinking. I was trying to put it in terms of, of evenings of time, you know, three or four evenings before each session, um, reading the materials, getting up to speed. Um, that's what I was going to suggest you sort of budget. This is Kevin. I guess my input would be um, I, am, I have two-year-old twins a full-time job, and lots of fishing to do, and I did not find it overwhelming. So I think that the, the time commitment was appropriate and manageable. Great. Yeah, that, I have to agree. It was manageable and enjoyable as well. I really enjoyed reading the five dysfunctions of a team and have, put, um, have really applied that in my job. So it was worth it. Great. All right. Um, another question we are getting is the mandatory time for classes. Um, so 
Yes, the the two the class sessions, two day sessions are definitely mandatory. Um, and the question here specifically was the overnight stay. Um, if you're local in those areas and you don't want to stay at the hotel, you don't have to. Um, but sometimes we go to like a group dinner or we'll have some sort of networking evening event since we're all going to be in the same place. And so we do make a requirement that you participate in all you know social functions uh, during that evening. Um, but you do not have to stay at the hotel. Um, and then we are getting questions about the scholarships um, and sort of what are we looking for when picking scholarships. So um, the, the requirement on urine is to submit a 200 word statement on your need and we look at that and sort of address it based on you know merit and you know what what are you saying is your need so um, oftentimes people's employers is, are paying for them to participate um, you know a lot of you know for example I was working for a nonprofit at the time Trout Unlimited and you know it wasn't within my budget or our board's budget and so participation for myself to be a water leader um, was definitely you know, I needed a scholarship or else I couldn't have participated. So we're definitely looking for the people that, um, you know, without financial help, you would not be able to participate. Um, but definitely anyone is willing to apply. Kristen, do you have anything to add on that? No, that's great. Cool. All right. Let's see. I think, um, let's see. How much of the program content is focused specific to water versus general leadership? Um, I guess I describe this, and you guys can fill me in or sort of back me up or not, um, but I sort of describe it as Water issues, water content, water is sort of the language that is common to all of us coming into the class. And so, you know, we speak about, you know, current issues that are going as examples and how to apply tools to current water things happening. Um, but that it is the primary focus is the leadership stuff. Um, with that, as I don't know if um, you're looking at, you know, how much do you need to know about water to get in? I don't think you need to know, you know, everything about water management in the state. I mean, you do learn a lot and your knowledge base is grown through this program by talking about it. Um, but if you do not need to be a water expert by any means to be a part of the conversation. Does anyone else have anything to add? No, I, I Chris and I usually, go ahead Bill. Go ahead. I was just going to say, just look at the, um, at the list of alumni and there's a lot of a lot of other agencies besides strict water agencies that are involved. So, um, so certainly it's, it's interesting to and insightful to see the dialogue, you know, around on the periphery of water. And I would, um, I usually point it as 75% leadership training and 25% water content. Um, all the, the discussions and, and field trips and um, guest speakers that we have um, apply to the specific leadership theme and topics of each session and so we've taken a look at you know what are the leadership challenges of the field of water resources management in Colorado and so a lot of that is um, navigating conflict um, promoting diversity um, constructive communication so we've taken those leadership challenges and created curriculum specific um, for this program but it's not a water content um, type of training. And, and we have another program at the Foundation for Water Education that addresses that need, and that's called Water Fluency. And that's more of like a Water 101, um, gives you that kind of background of water issues in Colorado and how to become a better decision maker. Great. So there's a follow-up question on the homework on how much notice is given before each session on homework assignments. Um, so February 13th, you guys will all learn if you are accepted to the program. A week later, we will you know, start sending you information. So you, at that time, will get your full agenda for the course. And at that time, um, it will um, lay out the homework requirements and everything that you need so you can prepare yourself adequately 
adequately and prepare your schedules. Um, so you will at least have three weeks before the first session to complete your homework. Um, the next question is on shadowing sessions and how does that work? Um, so Kristen has developed a pretty robust list of potential shadow ease. Uh, at the first session, we will present that list to you and help you think through you know, what is the shadow opportunity and really what are your goals from it? Um, as many of the people on here have mentioned that having a clear defined goal or objective of that shadowing experience is best and you'll get most out of it. Um, so there are a list of people who have, you know, they know that they are on this list and they are willing to, you know, be a mentor for you. And so we will sort of walk through that list. Um, and if someone is not on there but you would like to work with them, we can help to arrange that as well. So anyone else have thoughts on shadowing? Nope. All right, I think that is about wrapping up. I just want to make sure I hit all the question topics that are here. Um, any of the panelists, any of the speakers have any last comments you want to add? No? All right, well, I'm just making sure we hit all the questions, and if so, then we are good to go. I will put... Um, here is my contact information and our website. Um, there is a link to all the Water Leaders applications on our homepage. So go to yourwatercolorado.org, click on that link, and you will be directed to everything you need to know. Uh, but please reach out to me if you have any questions or um, thoughts or you know, want to think through if you are an acceptable or appropriate candidate. Um, and we will be recording, or I have been recording this, so everyone that participated in the webinar, will I will email you a recording of this as well. Um, I will also post the slides on our website, or uh, I'm not sure about that. Um, but if you want the slides, I'm happy to share them with you, so let me know. Um, and you will get a recording uh, for sure. So thank you so, so much for all of your work, and thank you for the panelists for participating. Um, and I'm here to answer questions if um, anyone needs in the future. So thank you so much.